watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Everybody. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Mr. Pop's neighborhood. Our discussion today will be against domestic violence. Say domestic violence. Domestic, domestic violence. violence. Affects everybody. Affects everybody. In the household. In the household. And in the neighborhood. And in the neighborhood. But in Mr. Pop's neighborhood. But in Mr. Pop's neighborhood. We don't tolerate domestic violence. We don't tolerate domestic violence. Give yourself a hand. My name is Mr. Pop. Welcome to Mr. Pop's Neighborhood. Would you be so kind to introduce yourself? Our guest today from Brooklyn, New York. Hi, my name is Zoe Flowers, and I am the founder of Highest Good Consulting, and I have been working in the battered women's movement for about nine years now. I'm also a survivor of domestic violence, and I've worked on domestic violence issues in Georgia, California, and in Florida. I'd like to get right into our discussion today, and kids, Feel freely to join in and express how you feel about domestic violence. Speak about how you feel about what you've been exposed to and how it affects you. How's that? Yeah. Great. Ms. Zoe, would you like to say something? Um, sure. I think um, this is a great conversation for us to be having because domestic violence does affect the whole family. I know that when people think about domestic violence, they really just think about it as a private issue, a family issue, but it really is a societal issue, it's a community issue, it affects us all, it has ties to gang violence, drug addiction, obesity, long-term health effects, um, exposure to domestic violence at a young age has effects, you know, affects children developmentally throughout their lifetime. Um, it's not all, it, it doesn't always have to be bad, but what we see is by keeping the mom safe, the children fare better when we're able to keep the mom safe. So that's really what I like to focus on is keeping mom safe in these situations. <coughs> and Ms. Zoe, <laughs> what I've been faced with, actually I had a discussion with a group of parents last week and I had to show them by example how it affects the children. When a dad comes home from work and he's sitting down watching NBA, football, NFL, whatever he's watching, and his wife comes in the house, or vice versa. The wife is watching TV, the wife is at home, and the husband or the boyfriend or whatever he may be come in the house, and the first thing he say to her is, where's my food? My food not on the table, my food not on the stove. And she goes to explain to him what she had to do during the course of the day, and that might have affected her preparing the food. So automatically he goes to what you call verbal assault which is an emotional scar. When you're cursing somebody, call them out their name, that's verbal assault. That leaves an emotional scar. And so what happens is the father, the boyfriend, whatever he may be, come in the home, get on the mother verbally. The next day he come home from work, repeat the process. He come home, he see that his food still not prepared. Now it results to violence. He start hitting on the woman physically. Now the following day, they repeat the process. When he come home, the food is prepared. Now, the little boy and the little girl who witnesses this see that domestic violence is effective. So now that kid feels as though, wow, this is what it took for mommy to fix the food. Now, do you see how effective the kids think that is? 
I want young people to know just because your parents do it don't make it right. I don't have any right whatsoever to hit on a woman, disgrace, call a woman out her name, do you know that's disrespectful? Yeah. And I'll be setting a bad example for you all, right? Yeah. You have any comments, Ms. Zoe? Schools also need to get involved in how to spot the effects of domestic violence. Children may be acting out in schools, but they can also be doing just the opposite. They could be sleeping all day, you know, because they're tired, because their parents have been up fighting all night long, and then, the, you know, the schools aren't always attentive to what's really going on with the children, and... <clears throat> So they want to enact measures that may not be useful, that may not be helpful for the children. You know what I mean? The children can't concentrate. They may have concentration problems. No parent should resort to physical fighting. Kids just shouldn't be exposed to that. Kids should be exposed to parents showing love. You know, set an example at all times. You understand that? Yes. A parent is the first kid's hero and shero. Y'all know what a hero is? Yes. What's some of the heroes you call heroes? Heroes are people that changed your life and made a big difference in your life, no matter if you knew them or not. Wouldn't you agree that your parents are your first heroes? Yes. Because those are the first people you're exposed to, aren't you? Yes. So you look up to them, correct? Yep. So everything they should do, it should be by a good example, correct? Yes. Because we don't tolerate that in Mr. Pop's neighborhood, right? No. Nope. We encourage one another, don't we? Yeah. Do you have any comments, Ms. Zoe? Yeah, I was just thinking that um, I think it's important to say that none of us are raised in a vacuum. And so even though, you know, people get together, and I don't think people have intentions on the situation becoming violent, but a lot of times women especially don't know what to look for, right? So I would just like to talk about maybe some myths that are associated with violence and maybe some signs so that people will, you know, will be able to spot a batterer, which is what we call them, in the work when they're coming along because a lot of times society makes us think that certain things that go on in relationships are romantic, right? So mm -hmm. if you meet somebody, usually a batterer is extremely charming. They're, they're, they're not out in the street doing the same things that they're doing at home. May start by being what you call a prince charming, sweeping you off your feet, calling you, you know, 20 times a day. And a lot of times women think that's romantic, but actually what it is is a grooming process, right? And then it moves into isolation where they start either criticizing you, picking you apart, separating you from your friends. They may say things like, I don't, you know, I don't trust your friends. They're not good for us, so why don't you just stay home with me? Or separate you from your family, telling you they're the only ones who understand you. So it really is a process so that by the time a person hits you, you know, you, you may be so, you could be six months to a year into the relationship before that hit actually happens, but usually they have knocked you down on so many levels that by the time they hit you, the hit is no big surprise. I mean, mm -hmm. I just, I mean, does that? Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. Accurate? And, and I'd like to share with you all about signs and symptoms. When you start detecting a man's behavior by being over aggressive, that's something to look out for. And when a man, when I talk about verbal assault, you have some women with low self-esteem, you have some with no self-esteem. But that don't give a man a right to pick out what they know that's effective and use that against a woman. You have men have a tendency of talking about women's weight problem. They know women self-conscious about that. They feel women self-conscious about their complexion. Women self-conscious about not able to bear children. And men use that. Don't you know that's a form of domestic violence? Because it's what you call verbal assault. <clears throat> Anytime a man pick out something that he knows that's effective, and that's going to make a woman feel low about herself, that's what a man uses. And that's a form of it, too. When you start seeing a man talk like that, always try to do a little research. It's because his dad did it to his mom. Mm -hmm. He was exposed to it. And you go back further, his grandfather did it to his grandmother. Mm -hmm. But we're here to break those generational curses by informing you at a young age that treat a person the way you would like to be treated. You don't have to talk down on any woman. A woman don't have to talk down on any kid. And guess what? Nobody in this room can help the way they look because God created you the way you are, and you're still somebody regardless. You understand that? Yeah. Whether your complexion, light, dark, or white, whether you have heavy set, fat, skinny, short, tall, that doesn't mean anything. And don't let nobody use that against you. When a person starts talking about the way you look, you know what you tell them? I'm pleased with it, so why you have a problem with it? Mm -hmm. You understand that? Yes. Use reverse psychology. 
because we talked about intimidation, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about bullying, right? Yeah. We talk about being uncomfortable, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a right to be uncomfortable in your presence, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever a person is uncomfortable in your presence, that's what? Say intimidation. intimidation. Nobody has a right to be intimidated, right? Mm -hmm. All that is a form of domestic violence. And when you all see it, understand it's not right, no matter who's doing it. Everything I'm discussing with you, I was engaged in that. I was what you call a terrorist. You know what a terrorist is? Anytime a person go around destroying their own community, they're a terrorist. What do you see? A scar. See a scar? Yeah. How many holes in my neck? Two. I had a trait. Two trachs in my throat. What do you see right here? A dent. A dent? Yeah. I was shot in the head with a nine millimeter selling poison. When a person sells poison in the community, they affect the family, society, and everybody that's in that that's around it. Do y'all understand that? Yeah. Yes. How it affect the children? When a parent have to come to me to take care of their addiction, that means the kid is being deprived of housing, clothing, food, medical. So when that kid go to school wearing the same clothes every day, kids tease the kid, right? Yes. It's because the parent took that money that they're supposed to be providing for the kid and come to me to buy heroin, cocaine, crack, to take care of their addiction. So you see how I'm responsible for that? But you know what? It took this to happen to me for me to change my life around. Now I travel all over the United States and do seminars on gangs, drugs, drug selling, peer pressure, bullying. Y'all understand that? Yes. yes. And I'm glad you all are part of Mr. Pop's neighborhood because you all are going to go out there and set a good example for other young people. Am I correct? Yes. And how do you all set a good example? Be a bigger person. Better. Be a leader, not a follower. What do you think about that, Deja? How do we set examples in the community? You set examples by doing the right thing and teaching the younger kids growing up what to do and what not to do. It's bad to treat others the way they don't want to be treated. And guess what? what? I don't have a right to treat you bad, do I? No. Right? You don't have a right to treat me bad, right? We should treat everybody what? The way we what? We want to be, be treated. Say it loud. We want to be treated. treated. We don't want to be treated rude. <laughs> we invite everybody to Mr. Pop's neighborhood, right? Yes. So we have what you call policies and guidelines they have to abide by, right? Yes. Now guess what? I have some good news. Um, we're going to talk about Big Urban's good news first. And then we're going to talk about Deja's good news. Big Herb, how was your progress report? Good. Um, Don't just say good. Explain to I'm, me. I'm showing progress and things I'm getting. I'm getting better at things that I was having trouble with before. For instance? Like Chinese. Chinese on um, Mandarin. What else? Um, How's your behavior? Good. Uh, excellent. Guess what? Can anybody help me to define peer pressure? Peer pressure is when you're forcing somebody to do something when it's wrong, when they know it's wrong. When they know what bullying is. That's something that you should not do because it's wrong. Because other people want to be um, treated nice, not, not um, brutally. Now, what I want you all to understand something, okay? Bullying comes in different forms. Young ladies, understand something. Say intimidation. Intimidation. Say uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. If you stand at your locker and a young lady walk by and you roll your eyes and suck your teeth at her, do y'all know that's a form of bullying? Yes. Do y'all know that? Yes. If you walk by somebody's desk, and look at them and suck your teeth. 
Do you know it's a form of bullying? Yes. yes. Always remember that when a person is uncomfortable in your presence, that's what? In timber? That's a form of bullying, right? Yes. Nobody has the right to be uncomfortable in your presence, right? Yes. We make everybody feel comfortable, correct? Yes. You understand it? Yes. What we must understand is everybody deal with situations differently. Y'all know that? Yes. A person who cannot accept bullying, they go home and they feel like an outcast. They feel like they're not accepted. They feel like nobody wants to be their friend. And you know they go into what you call, say, emotional stress. Emotional stress. Do y'all know emotional stress is bad? Yes. You know what it does? It sometimes makes a person feel, say, suicidal. Suicidal. And you know why a lot of people feel like suicidal? It's because they feel like they're not accepted. So why be in this world? Nobody wants to be around them. Nobody wants to talk to them. Nobody loves them. You all understand that? Yeah. So we should always be conscious of how someone else feels, right? Yes. So, so you would use that word, say emotional stress. Emotional, emotional stress. stress. We don't want nobody to be emotionally stressed out. How do you help people out when you see somebody being bullied in your classroom or your friend being bullied? The best thing to do, talk to that person. You know that? If somebody's rude to somebody, you have to talk to them to make them feel better or tell the teacher. They'll say, um, don't bother that person because if they, if they do their sign wrong, that could be really mean. Repeat after me. Say this word, say snitching. Snitching. Now say, there's no such thing as snitching. There's no such thing as snitching. Say, why, Mr. Pop? Why, Mr. Pop? Listen to this. If you have a friend in the class with you, and you know that kid is being bullied on, you need to immediately identify that bully, and you inform the teacher of that bully. Say, identify. Identify. And the teacher will rectify the teacher will resolve the problem. If you identify a bully, you notify the teacher. Now say it. First you identify, then you notify, and the teacher will rectify. Now, if you don't do that, and your friend go home after school, and as your friend cutting through the projects, going down the street, going behind the school, taking a shortcut, and a group of kids jump on that kid, they head hit the curb, they head hit the fire hydrant, go into a concussion, say ICU. ICU. Say intensive, intensive care unit. And that kid goes into ICU. And later on you hear about your friend in, t in, t in intensive care. And you find out it's the same group of kids that you know have been bullying in the classroom. Wouldn't you feel bad about that? Yes. So say snitching. Snitching. Don't exist. Don't exist. When you're trying to help somebody. When you're trying to help somebody. Always understand it, okay? Because yes. people have a tendency of saying, you snitch. No, you didn't snitch. You're concerned about people, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And thrown in ditches. But guess what? what? Don't believe that, all right? Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Because it's not snitching because you're concerned about somebody else, right? Yes. Yes. And you don't want to see nobody else harmed, right? No. Mm -hmm. And if you get harmed, wouldn't you want somebody to witness it and be able to identify the person who hurt you? Yeah. Yeah. Would you call that person a snitch? No. Mm -hmm. So there's no such thing as what? Snitching. <laughs> Parent, would you like to say anything about Mr. Pop's neighborhood, or would you like to say anything about what your kids involved with? Well, thanks to God, my kids are not exposed to nothing bad because I try to do anything possible for them to have a good life, have fun, and I got a little knucklehead, but it's okay, I guess. I want to thank each and every one of you all for taking time out to participate in Mr. Pop's Neighborhood. And I want you all to continue setting a good example for other youth your age. You understand that, right? Yes. Because that helps out what? The community. Community and what else? And we want to thank our guests coming all the way from Brooklyn, New York, Ms. Zoe. Y'all want to thank Ms. Zoe? Thank you, Ms. Zoe. And we want to thank the parent. Thank you, parent.
And we want to thank each and every one of you all. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Wonderful day in the neighborhood. Wonderful day in the neighborhood. And nobody can deny everything's good in Mr. Pop's neighborhood. For resources on how to get domestic violence, Ms. Zoe, would you like to explain your initiative? Yes. Um, well, first I'd like to say that if you are in the city of Hartford and you are in a domestic violence situation, you can contact Interval House, and you can also go to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. You can find their number online. You can also go to my website, www.highestgoodconsulting.org. Again, that's www.highestgoodconsulting.org, and there's lots of information on resources uh, of, of domestic violence. There's information there. If you you suspect you're in a domestic violence relationship you can go to that website and find all that information out so I just thank you um, pop for giving me the, the time to get that information out there Anytime. thank you Ms. Zoe